activities to promote uh, friendship, brotherhood, unity is something which is of, uh, of uh, great importance uh, to all of us. Uh, I am impressed by the mission uh, that with which uh, Kathleen, you and your other team members are promoting this uh, wonderful cause. And uh, we congratulate you and uh, uh, we, uh, I am very happy that you would be visiting Pakistan again in uh, 60 days time. Uh, let me tell you that a very warm welcome awaits you in Pakistan. Uh, you are familiar with all the places. Uh, Lahore would be uh, still be beautiful in the month of May, although the summer season would uh, almost be, uh, be there. But uh, Lahore, is, as you s rightly said, it's the cultural and uh, 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 intellectual capital of Pakistan, a beautiful city, uh, a wonderful city, uh, uh, a very historic city. Um, I don't have to... Um, to introduce my country because you're all familiar with Pakistan. Um, uh, I come from a country and I am proud of the fact that uh, we are inheritors of uh, more than 5,000 years old uh, civilization, the Indus Valley civilization. Um, I come from a country where uh, we, uh, where one great religion was born and I am talking about Hinduism. The Hinduism was born on the banks of River Indus, uh, which is now in Pakistan. Again, I come from that country which exported uh, one of the greatest religions, that is Buddh Buddhism, because the oldest university in the world, the Buddhist university in the world, that was established about 6,000 years ago in a place called Takshila, which is about 40 kilometers from the capital, Islamabad. And then, uh, you know, um, many uh, uh, historical sites to visit in Pakistan, including the places where you can trace the footsteps of Alexander the Great. It, Alexander the Great, um, and um, uh, there is a, when you come to my office, I will show you a book. There is a new book which, is, which has been published about my own home city. My home city, Multan, again, one of the ancient cities. And the historians, they write that when Alexander the Great invaded the ancient city of Multan, you know, in other words, when Alexander invaded my home city, Multan, even, even at that time, it was an ancient city. So, you know, you can well imagine how ancient it must be. We have been in the eye of the storm for a number of years, um, at least for the last 30 years because of the, uh, the conflict in Afghanistan, uh, because of the uh, Soviet, in, 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 since the so Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. We can, I can certainly take some credit that my country played a significant role in making the United States of America as the supreme soul, uh, superpower in the world. And I say this because you are well aware that during the Cold War period, there was a major conflict between two power centers, Soviet Union and the United States of America. Being an ally of the, uh, the US, uh, we uh, have been part of almost every initiative that the United States of America has taken in that region, we played the most significant role in the defeat of the Soviet Union. Uh, that's history. Um, uh, that's something that is very well recognized in almost everybody. But one major challenge of that involvement that we had in the uh, Afghan conflict was a very uh, unfortunate legacy that we have inherited. And the uh, legacy is in the shape of all these extremist groups who were invited by all of us sitting here to come to Afghanistan to fight with us, with the Soviet Union. After the defeat of the Soviet Union, when everybody washed their hands off uh, Afghanistan and the region, Pakistan was the only country left behind to 
to, to grapple with this very serious problem. And that's something that we are now faced with at the moment. When I talk, when I say that we have been in the eye of the storm, this is the storm that I was talking about, that we have been uh, facing this extremism for the last many, many years. I'm sure that you are all aware of this very tragic school attack that took place on 16th of December last year, in which terrorists, they, they struck at a school in Peshawar and killed 150 innocent children. 150 innocent children, their ages ranging between 6 to 16. They burnt the uh, principal and the teachers in front of the, the children. So that is a major tragedy. That's, that's, that is not the only tragedy that we, suffered, we faced, but there are many other tragedies. You're all familiar with what happened to Malala. Malala Yousafzai, uh, an icon of bravery, a, a kind of a, uh, uh, somebody who has become a role model for every child and every girl child in the country, every child in the country. She received threats from, she comes from a remote area of Pakistan, the tribal region of Pakistan, where the families, they often get threats from these extremist groups that uh, uh, girls, Education is something that we don't endorse. But these brave girls, they braved those threats and they continued to go to that school till such time they were school van was attacked. That was a couple of years ago. What I'm trying to say is that these are the kind of challenges that we are faced with. But touch wood, the situation is certainly looking much better today. Much better because in terms of, uh, in order to defeat the extremism and terrorism, the entire nation has united on one platform. Uh, from Karachi to Khaybar, to the Afghan border, everybody, every individual, every child, there is a consensus across the board amongst all the, polit all the political parties, all the groups, members of the civil society, school children, that we will not be deterred by these extremist forces and that we have no option but to fight them and we will fight them to the end. And this is exactly what we have. Six months ago, we launched operations in the tribal region of Pakistan against Al-Qaeda, against people belonging to various groups, Chechens, Uzbeks, all kinds of people who, had, who were misusing the hospitality of our land. We launched operations and we have been able to eliminate more than 2,000 people belonging to these groups. We have disrupted their command and control system that they had established in the remote parts of the tribal areas of Pakistan. Simultaneously, we have also la launched a major uh, operation inside the country following the attack on this school, whereby we have in order to, uh, to bust the sleeper cells, the support base for all these uh, international uh, organizations which had uh, developed their base in the tribal areas of Pakistan. So that's why I say that the situation is looking good because, we, the, um, because of the efforts, the threat from these forces has reduced significantly. Significantly, it's not gone away, it will take a few more, uh, more years, uh, this is uh, not going to be an easy battle, but the important thing is that a beginning has been made, there is a determination, and now we are prepared. And here I must say that in our fight against these forces, in our counterterrorism efforts, we are getting very good support from the United States of America. Our, you know, the kind of dialogue that we are having for the last several years now, two years at least, it's a wonderful dialogue. It's a, and because of this very good cooperation, not only between our two militaries, our intelligence agencies, our uh, civil law enforcement agencies, our political leadership, our army leadership, the, there is 
a very good cooperation that has been forged in order to defeat these forces. The other challenge, which is also directly linked to the economy, uh, to, to terrorism, is the revival of the economy. Our economy, which was growing at a rate of 6 to 7 percent till the 80s, began to slow down again because of the Afghanistan crisis, because of terrorism. So the, our focus is at the moment on the revival of the economy. And I think the, uh, these efforts have produced some good results. Good results because in the last one year, the economy has picked up from 3% of uh, uh, growth to, for, of 2012 and 2013. Last year's growth, growth figures were 4.2%. And according to the World Bank and IMF and other international agencies, uh, the Pakistan's economy is expected to grow uh, up to 5.5, 5.3% next year, which is, which is something which is very impressive, which also shows the kind of reforms which have been introduced by the government. Modi's and other international rating agencies, Standard and, Standard and Poor and other agencies, they have upgraded Pakistan's economic outlook from negative to positive, which is again something which is wonderful because the inflation in the last one year, which, was, which had reached a double digit figure of 11 to 12 percent, has come down to 4.5 percent. The foreign direct investment has improved tremendously. Uh, when we, I remember that last year when we offered the oil and gas sector, we offered um, um, the auto industry, we offered uh, uh, investments in agriculture, the response was extremely positive. On the 10th and 11th of March, the U.S. government and the government of Pakistan, we are jointly organizing a business opportunities conference in Islamabad. This is the third of the series of the conference conferences jointly being developed by Pakistan and the U.S., where uh, uh, besides the Secretary of Commerce, uh, who is leading a uh, high-power delegation to participate in that uh, uh, conference, we are getting uh, uh, more than 200 <coughs> businessmen from the United States of America uh, coming from various corporations to participate in that uh, uh, the Business Opportunities Conference, where uh, they will look at various opportunities that exist, whether in the uh, 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 in industry, oil and gas, water, infrastructure, agriculture, uh, health, all these areas would be up for, uh, for joint ventures or for uh, investments. You know, the economic situation is becoming so good that JETRO, the uh, Japanese uh, agency, has uh, termed Pakistan as the second most uh, important destination for foreign investment because of the, uh, of the good uh, uh, opportunities available, because of the good money that the business people they are making in Pakistan. And similarly, um, uh, the standard, uh, the SACS, uh, 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 Goldman Sachs, they have also, uh, in their uh, report, recent report, they have declared that Pakistan's economy would be the uh, 18th largest economy by 2050. But I, we feel that the way we are proceeding, it may be even earlier. Similarly, um, uh, uh, the latest World Bank report, which has been published, that shows Pakistan ahead of other regional countries in terms of ease of doing business in Pakistan. So, you know, these are some of the good um, um, uh, uh, kind of a, uh, positive stories that we are talking about. In terms of U.S.-Pakistan bilateral cooperation, again, we have a robust strategic dialogue between our two countries at the level of Secretary of State and the Foreign Minister of Pakistan. We recently, Secretary of State, um, uh, Mr. John Kerry was in Pakistan for the uh, uh, third round of the strategic dialogue in, uh, on 18th of January. 
Um, and I think, again, under this strategic dialogue, some uh, very good development has taken place. We have established six working groups. Working group on eco economy and trade. Uh, we have a $5.5 billion worth of trade, uh, 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 Pakistan and the United States of America, but this, the purpose of this working group is to increase this level of trade to, uh, to a much higher figure, maybe about $10 billion in the next five years. So that's the kind of efforts which are being made. We have a working group on energy cooperation. Again, it's a, uh, you know that uh, our economic economy also slowed down because of power shortages, because unfortunately, uh, our planners, economic planners, they could not, our energy requirements could not keep pace with the overall development which was taking place in the country. So accordingly, uh, there is a lot of focus on the energy sector development. The uh, projects which are in the pipeline at the moment, they will add about 10,000 megawatts of electricity in the next five to six years. But again, here I would like to mention that because of the U.S. good cooperation with Pakistan, the, only by the U.S. efforts, we have been able to increase about 1,400 megawatts of electricity in our national grid in the last one year. So that basically, that is also speaks volume about the good cooperation that we are having with the U.S. energy sector. Similarly, we have a, a very good di uh, dialogue on defense cooperation. The, our de defense cooperation is excellent. Uh, 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 there, are, there is regular interaction between General Dempsey and Army Chief General Rahil Sharif. Uh, there is a regular interaction between the intelligence uh, 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 CIA director and Director General ISI, and the co cooperation has become very good. We are uh, jointly working in order to bring about peace and stability in Afghanistan and other hot spots in the region. So that's a wonderful area of cooperation between Pakistan and the United States of America. On nuclear, we have a, have a working group on nuclear non-proliferation and strategic stability. Again, being a nuclear power, we are, uh, we are part of the, this, these important discussions, we share the same objectives with the United States of America of nuclear non-proliferation, and we are contributing significantly to these efforts. Our own command and control system of our Pakistani nuclear assets is something which is, which is again becoming a model of uh, command and control system by many other countries, and deeply appreciated by, by, by the US and other countries. As a matter of fact, in the recently held um, nuclear security summit uh, in The Hague last year, which uh, uh, where President Obama was also there and the other world leaders were also there. Secretary Kerry in his press conference declared Pakistan's command and control system of the nuclear uh, assets that we have as a model kind of a uh, uh, command and control system uh, to be followed by other countries. So we, feel, we take great pride that we have been able to to, to uh, ensure the security and safety of our nuclear assets. Then we have a working group on um, uh, counterterrorism and law enforcement, uh, where um, we are getting very good cooperation from the uh, US side in building up the capacity of our own civilian law enforcement agencies. We have a working group on uh, education. Uh, we have the largest number of uh, Pakistani students studying in the United States of America under the Fulbright Scholarship Program. Um, so these are, again, uh, uh, good areas of cooperation, and I have absolutely no doubt that in the coming months and years, this cooperation is going to further increase. Uh, in terms of regional cooperation, again, I would say that, uh, uh, as I said, that U.S. and Pakistan are working jointly in order to bring peace and stability in Afghanistan. We both worked closely, uh, we are working closely with the new Afghan government led by President Ashraf Ghani and uh, Chief Executive uh, uh, Mr. Abdullah Abdullah. And I think, again, it's a very good cooperation, trilateral cooperation that is going on between Pakistan, Afghanistan, and the United, uh, and, uh, United States of America. Uh, we are uh, working very closely in order to ensure that uh, 
the, uh, the positive developments which have taken place in Afghanistan, they, uh, they, are, they make further progress, they stabilize, and we will do anything to stabilize the situation in Afghanistan. We have contributed significantly to the economic development of uh, Afghanistan. We have recently spent about $500 million in, in various developmental activities in Afghanistan, including building of some primary schools, health centers, a university, uh, and also a road from Torkham, which is the Pakistan border, up to Jalalabad, which is the uh, Afghanistan pro uh, province. Uh, we have also established an eye center uh, for the treatment of eye diseases in Afghanistan. So this is something which is so. Uh, and also we have offered about 7,000 uh, scholarship to 7,000 Afghan students to study, come and study in Afghanistan, uh, in Pakistan, various uh, professional institutions. So those 7,000 Pakistan Afghan students are studying in Pakistani institutions under a scholarship program that was introduced by Pakistan. This 7,000 number is in addition to the children of those three million Afghan refugees who are living in Pakistan for the last 35 years. These were the refugees who migrated, who came from Afghanistan to Pakistan at the time of Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. So that's very, again, I would say that the, our, we, we have convergences with regard to peace and stability in, in the region. I mentioned about the wonderful work uh, done by our very dear friend Kathleen Meyer and her team, uh, 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 a group belonging to Lahore Delhi Delaware partnership, in order to build bridges between Pakistan and India also. We, our history of Pakistan India relation, unfortunately, has not been a glorious history. We have had wars, we have had tensions, but I think there is a very strong realization amongst the people of the two countries that we need to transcend the past and look to the future because, and we have to grapple with the difficult issues that confront the two countries, which are the main sources of tension between our two countries, because the overwhelming majority of the people of the two countries, they want a better living standard for themselves. They, they want uh, an end to poverty, they want an end to it illiteracy. They also want an end to this extremism and violence and terrorism. These are the common objectives of the people of, the, of the, not only India and Pakistan, but almost every country in the region. And that can co only come about in case there is a good relationship between Pakistan and India, because India-Pakistan good relations are extremely important for the overall peace and stability in, in the region. And this is, and I have absolutely, I have dealt with this issue for the last almost half of my uh, diplomatic career in the, uh, I have put in about 35, 36 years in the diplomatic service of Pakistan. And I have dealt with this Pakistan-India relations almost half of my uh, career. And I have absolutely no doubt that things will get better, things are getting better. And the moment we uh, resume our dialogue, we should also be able to grapple with the difficult issues. Once again, Kathleen, I'll thank you for uh, inviting me. I have enjoyed this trip to, to uh, Wilmington. I uh, thank uh, all the dear friends that I have met, uh, David, Methy, uh, Tom, uh, Rebecca, uh, everybody, uh, uh, my Pakistani-American friends, the American-American friends, and it had been a wonderful uh, uh, visit. Uh, enjoyed it thoroughly. I wish I had more time to spend more time with uh, all of you who are gathered here, but I have a very important meeting to attend at 4 o'clock back in Washington, for which I have to leave a little early. Thank you so much. Yeah.